in the history of time, I am number one. All right, we all know that that's not true, but I am pretty good at stealing from other bands without actually stealing from them. And today I'm gonna show you how I did that for My Chemical Romance. Today's video is sponsored by Court Guitars and this very lovely X700 Duality 2. This is the guitar that you're gonna be hearing me play throughout this video. It is extra sick. Get ready to cry your piggy little eyes out because it's time to get emo, boys and girls. What is it that makes this song tug at the heartstrings to make you feel emotions? Really, any song should make you feel emotions. That's literally the entire point. I had somebody write to me today on Facebook and say, why is this song so good? Oh, that's such a big question to ask. First of all, because I was working with great source material to steal from, but also because of all of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today. I am gonna go through all of the stems and break down the song a little bit for you today. I spent a long time researching the music of My Chemical Romance and yoinking all of the stuff that makes them so great without actually taking any of their musical ideas. This is the, uh, I think, sixth that I've done in these series. I have now done Slipknot, Metallica, Dream Theater, Jason Richardson, Ghost, and now My Chemical Romance. There's probably one that I'm missing. Uh, how could I forget? I also did Amaranth, my favorite band of all time. So this is actually number seven. And every time I do one of these, I fall more in love with the band that I am trying to emulate. So while I did go all the way through the entire back catalog of the band, I focused mainly on the Black Parade because that's my personal favorite. I think it's their masterwork. The song Dead, Helena, Helena? Helena? Anyway, whatever, however you say that from their album, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. And the actual inspiration for the lyrical content and most of the direction of the song actually came from the skit. This idea that they're like making a comeback right now, you know, they release a new song, their first new song in like 14 years or whatever. I was like, what would really hit the fans hard? We're all here waiting for them to put out some new music. We don't want new music, really. We want stuff that sounds like the old stuff. We want it to be like it was. I thought it was funny to imagine that also that's what Gerard wanted. And this idea that like, no, we can't go back. And then I just had to kind of bring it to life. This is actually a technique that I use pretty often. I will imagine what the music video for the song is going to be like as I'm writing the song, which feels like putting the cart before the horse but I find that visualizing a story makes it easier for me to tell a story in the song. So let's just start off by listening through a little bit and then I'll talk about what's going on here. So of course we're starting with this piano thing. All right, so this is something that My Chemical Romance does all the time. It's called the minor four chord. So we're in the key of E major, right? So the four chord in E major is A major. But if we take the four chord and make it minor, so A minor, It's that sort of classic turnaround, most famously in All I Want For Christmas Is You by Mariah Carey. People call it like the Christmas chord. I use it all the time. So does My Chemical Romance. So it shows up a couple of times in this song. So I actually made the intro to sort of follow the skit. The guitar magically playing like, oh, what's going on? And then everybody sort of joins in. So I needed it to sort of creep in, not just all hit at once. And that's actually the first thing that I wrote. Don't you tell me that we could never go back. And then everybody hits all together. Go back! And actually that line is the last thing that I recorded. And then this was sort of an homage to Dead. But it's... Okay, then we got these octaves, strummed octaves as the melody. Mm -hmm. 
This exact melody actually never comes back. It's sort of a variation on the chorus melody. I have a time machine Reading her diary Swearing we would never change It's not too late Me doing my, my best Gerard impression, okay? It's really hard. He's an amazing singer. Like many of the singers that I have to cover, I very rarely quite do them justice. But big thanks to Chris Lipe, who made an amazing video on how to sing like like Gerard. I would not have been able to sing anything like this without it. But more than anything else, honestly, just the uh, before like a lot of the words kind of gave it that angsty teen sort of a feeling. Up until this point, we've just had a very simple, palm muted. Continues to be simple, but it opens up from the palm muting, which makes it feel like we've now gone somewhere, even though the chords are exactly the same. Throughout this first part of the verse, the bass has dropped out entirely. Sometimes during a verse, uh, I'll go down to just the bass, no guitars. Kind of did the opposite here, took out the bass, which makes it feel much lighter, but you can't really put your finger on why. Bane, reading her diary, right. swearing we would never change. And then it's And I did that just like a measure before to give you the, like this feeling of anticipation. It pulls you along, right? So the rhythm guitars don't open up all the way yet. There's still some palm muting. Just giving it a little bit more rhythm and open it up a bit so it's not straight palm muting. And it's kind of staccato, you know, it has a little... It outlines the chords a little bit right before everything closes way back down for the pre-chorus. Until we open way up for the chorus. So in a lot of ways, to me, the dynamics of a song are a lot about closing and opening and various levels in between. It's not all or nothing. And you can use that even if your band is just guitar bass drums and vocals. You don't need a lot of like studio trickery, reverse cymbals, you know, 808 swells and, and crap like that, which I use all the time and love, but you don't need that necessarily as long as you're thinking in terms of that and giving people an emotional payoff, manipulating the listener's emotions, which makes it seem, uh, I don't know, wrong or something, but they love it. They want, they want to be pulled down and then pulled back up. It's part of the story. It's part of the ride. Here again, after giving him the big chorus, wide open, lots of harmonies. There's a lot of things going on in the backing vocals, but my favorite thing, the thing that gives it the most motion is this part that goes like this. All I'm doing is just arpeggiating those triads. I'm just singing the chord tones of the chords that are happening at that moment. So it's C sharp minor. So it's just the notes of C sharp minor. G sharp minor. That's it. And then there's some notes that are just held like long single notes. And it creates this, what's called oblique motion. Like one of them is staying still and the rest of them are moving and you hear them against each other. And it sounds cool. <laughs> the guitars are wide open. Along with some more strummed octaves just to fill it out, not as a melody, just to sort of fill out the chords a little bit. Then they do it at least in dead, but just this sort of quarter note stompy thing, like which they do it in uh, teenagers, I think. Sort of little blues rock thing. Just to give it a little bit more life. So here's something that I did in the chorus. They do this chord progression a lot, like a the one chord, a major one chord. 
and then a major three chord. And I, I wanted to do that, but I didn't want to just do that. I'm trying to toe the line here between imitation and copyright infringement. So what I did was I split the difference. I started the chorus off minor in the relative minor. So instead of landing on E major, I went to the relative minor because the melody that I'd come up with worked with that chord. And then I went to the minor three chord. And then when it comes back around, you're expecting it to repeat exactly. That's when I hit him with the E major. Back. And the major three chord. I'm doing it our way. So it's the same, but it's different. So I'm playing with your expectations. I think it works pretty well. I could have just done it exactly the same both times. I could have done it the other way around, but I didn't. couple of real subtle things that also happen during the second half of the chorus. This is something that I stole straight out of the Black Parade. And maybe you didn't notice it because it's not super loud in the mix. I made sure to tell the mix guy not to crank it up. Santa? Is that Santa? Where's... Oh, he's real! There are totally sleigh bells in Welcome to the Black Parade. If you don't believe me, check out my other video where I break down all the isolated tracks to Welcome to the Black Parade, all the orchestration and stuff. So now we've got sleigh bells and the Christmas chord. Is the secret of My Chemical Romance just Christmas? Is Gerard Way Santa Claus? Well, if he is, I hope for Christmas, we're getting a new album. And then the other thing that happens is in the lead guitar, I just gave it a little sort of melodic counter melody thing. And that drops us neatly into this little guitar solo. Guitar solo one. This song is barely over three minutes and I managed to sneak two guitar solos in there like the Beatles would do. I tried to make it sort of bluesy, but also classic rock. And I threw in a surprise chord at the end. We go to the flat seven to give us a little bit of a surprise. And then we're right into the second verse. I personally like the second verse to either pick up right where the first verse left off. We've developed the first verse from closed off, tight palm muting, and then we opened it up a little bit. When we get to the second verse, you don't want to reset all the way back and have to build all the way back up. So I like to pick up where we left off or take it down even further just for a little bit and then hit them with, where we left off from the first verse. So in this case, I kind of just picked up basically where we left off, plus this little lead thing. And then wide open for the second half of the second verse. And then I introduced a, a little uh, rhythmic figure to accent 
this part where I literally say it's not a phase. Obviously, that's sort of a like an ongoing elder emo joke. It's not a phase, mom. But I think I did it in a way that doesn't, it didn't really feel corny to me. It's not a phase, it's not a phase. But just this figure where everybody hits together gives it a little bit of extra power along with the backing vocals. It's not a phase, it's not a phase. Don't you tell me that we can never go back. And then a full stop right before the chorus hits, which we didn't do the first time. It's pretty easy for the full stop to get very tiresome very quickly, so I try not to do them too often, but it's just so damn effective. Never go back. The ending of the second chorus is a little bit different to get us into the bridge. We can never go. This is almost like a bit of a black metal twist, but what's actually happening is that we're kind of just railing on that minor four chord that I was talking about earlier, the Christmas chord, but without resolving it, and that makes it feel kind of evil. I don't know, just felt right. I don't know that I could like cite a precedence in any of their songs, but it just kind of felt like something that they would do. And then, Queen. It is no secret that My Chemical Romance loves Queen. Please go and look up when they play, I think it's Glastonbury and they play Welcome to the Black Parade with Brian May. Oh, it'll hit you real hard. It's, a, it's an amazing moment. So I wrote this harmonized guitar solo that's supposed to sound like My Chemical Romance doing Queen. Anytime there's a harmonized guitar solo that they do, to me it sounds more like Queen and less like, I don't know, Iron Maiden or some other band that does a lot of twin leads. <laughs> Pretty epic, if I do say so myself. They're an epic band, man. And then I brought it way down and dropped the tempo, like 20 or 30 BPM. And then a drum part vaguely reminiscent of Welcome to the Black Parade. So we dropped the BPM for that whole section that we just heard right out of the solo. I wanted to bring everything down. It's just piano and vocal. And then we're gonna crank the tempo back up as one of the sort of dynamic devices that we're gonna use over the course of this ending part of the song to continually crank up the heat and make it more and more intense. We're not waiting around to die. We're going out with the bang this Little time. Snare we'll thing. carry on. We'll be okay if we cut the throat of complacency. Also added some orchestration, starting with, I think, a French horn. And some lower horns. We've added guitars, both lead and rhythm. I had to find a lead guitar part that worked with the vocal melody, but I also wanted it to sound big and epic like it does at the end of Black Parade. And one of the ways that I grew even just that lead guitar part throughout is I varied what octave I played it in, whether it's doubled in octaves and or harmonized. And the rhythm guitar is now open instead of palm muting.
little Freddy. Every time I crank up the heat, I add something in every part of the arrangement. The orchestration gets bigger. I'm adding more parts. The drums are adding in more cymbals like this. And Tom fills. I change the register of different instruments in the orchestration. This is really easy to do with orchestration because in an orchestra, you've got stuff from very, very, very low to very high, right? The contrabassoon to a piccolo. Trumpets go up an octave there. Add it in the flute. And the piccolo, super high. Organ. There's glockenspiel. What I'm doing to start is writing parts that utilize the notes that are in each of those chords that I just mentioned. And you don't have to know like the names of them or anything. You can just like play the chords on the guitar if you're a guitarist and find those notes on the keyboard, on the instrument that you're programming or writing for at that moment. And just know that those same notes for that chord exist in every octave. So if we listen to the orchestration, There are notes in there that aren't those three notes landing on the chord tones. This is something I go into way more detail in in my course. the big ride out. So this right here is the climax of the song. Everything throughout the whole rest of the song is building to this moment, the same way that they do in Welcome to the Black Parade. Every part of the song is awesome, but they're building to this one moment where you just absolutely lose it because it's perfect. And I did my best to do something like that. What's happening throughout this whole part is every four to eight bars everything just gets bigger. Something changes in every part of the arrangement to make the whole thing feel like it's growing. I always think in terms of the story of the song. Like you're not just stringing the listener along, okay? You're gonna give them something worth getting back on the ride for when they're done. You wanna get to the end of the song, like you're getting off a roller coaster, and just get right back in line to get on. You, you just want to go again. It doesn't have to be this crazy dynamic for every song. That's what I think makes this song really good. I am very proud of this song. I think it turned out exactly how I imagined it. I think it sounds convincingly like My Chemical Romance. If they played this song, I think it would sound like them. But I think it sounds pretty authentic. And not only that, what I did to make it catchy, memorable, emotionally powerful. This is all stuff that you can do. None of this is like magic or tricks. They're all just like techniques and ideas and things that you can try in your songs. And this is all stuff that I cover in my course, which is called Complete Rock and Metal Songwriting. You can find out more about that in the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Court for sponsoring this video with this magnificent X700 Duality 2 guitar 
feels awesome, it plays great, it looks like a million bucks. You can find out more information about this guitar and where to get one of your own at the link in the description below. And if you haven't seen the video and heard the song that I'm talking about in this video, you're definitely gonna wanna watch it right here. And if you are a guitar player who has tons and tons of riffs and no finished songs, you are for sure gonna wanna watch this video right here, because I'm gonna help you take those riffs and turn them into songs. And I'll see you real soon.